What's up guys? If you have an entire gearbox full of multicam black, and you think it's gonna serve a purpose outside of looking cool, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, we're gonna talk a little bit about surplus today. Uh, specifically, this rig that I have on right now. This is uh, an Eagle Industries multi-purpose chest rig. It's pretty great. I got it from a surplus store. Uh, and then I picked up a bunch of these pouches that I have on here from a surplus store. Actually, my guys, uh, Venture Surplus, awesome dudes, very based. You should definitely check them out. Not affiliated other with them, I just think they're cool. Um, they, they sell some awesome surplus. Uh, a lot of Eagle Industries, which is uh, great stuff, right? We're also going to talk a little bit about camo selection. Um, you know, M81 gets a lot of hate, but I'm going to go on record as saying that I love M81. And I also know for a fact it's better than Multicam Black, so there's that. Um, I'm sure we're going to get some comments on that, which is fine. Go ahead, guys. Um, you know, Surplus is a great spot to look for stuff, especially if you do a little bit of research. Uh, look for things and get things for pretty cheap that are really high quality, right? Uh, obviously, Army, Navy, you know, Air Force and uh, Marine surplus, they vary in quality. They vary in, uh, you know, who, who, who negotiated the contract at the time and was making the clothing or the chest rig or the play carrier or whatever it might be, right? Um, so there is variance, and that's something you have to learn about when you're shopping for surplus, is that some things are just not that great and some things are a really good deal. This Eagle Industries chest rig, for instance, I got for like $100. That's a steal, right? Uh, to get something comparable, of comparable quality, that's brand new on the market. And by the way, this was new unused surplus, right? So this had never been issued. This is brand new, basically. It was sitting in a box somewhere, and then somebody sold it to me on eBay. Uh, they, in particular, they had a surplus store, right? So you can really come up on some great finds. Other stuff might be, might be you know, lightly used. Some stuff is listed as defective. So you really have to know what you're getting into. Uh, you know, if you're pretty handy, you can definitely pick up some defective, quote unquote, defective surplus stuff and fix it up and it's fantastic, right? Like a couple of patches, you're good to go. Typically surplus stores don't sell items that don't zip. So usually the zippers or the buttons, they're all gonna work, but there might be a hole, there might be a rip, there might be some wear, you know, it might, it's just not in that great of condition, right? I picked up this M81 uh, level four cold weather parka for 40 bucks, right? So you could pay uh, a big gear brand name. I won't name any particular, I guess, but uh, you could pay them, you know, hundreds of dollars for a jacket, even more. And it'll be a great jacket. It'll work perfectly fine, I'm sure. Uh, you know, a lot of the new stuff is fantastic, obviously, right? I own a, a lot of new equipment as well. Um, but, you know, if you're operating on a budget like me, uh, you know, $40 parka ain't that bad. And this thing absolutely is ready to rock and roll. Uh, you know, so that's that's something to consider, right? And, and this chest rig as well. Right? Like, I think this chest rig all built out right now, I'm, a, I'm like $150 in, which is comparable with some other chest rigs that are on the market, right? But this is, I mean, I've got six mags in here. I've got a right in the rain. I've got a compass. I've got a map. I've got... Uh, uh, trauma kit. I've got my radio. I've got a smoke grenade. All in this in this chest rig. Let's go ahead and get the rifle off so you guys can see. So, let's lay this guy down over here. So, this thing's pretty awesome, man. Um, you've got your mag pouches up here. You got four mag pouches up here, which can you can actually double stack mags in, especially if you're using like a, you know Dura mags or uh, Surefeed or any of those like aluminum or, or steel based kind of USGI platform M16 mags, right? Those you can double stack in here. If you've got stuff like Lancers or Magpul, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to double stack them. However, I don't know how well you can see this, but there's also some bungee retention inside the mat pockets that are in here where you can slide mags into and it holds them there, which is pretty awesome, right? Uh, so I've got a fighting load, six mags on me right now. 
I also have a multi-tool. And you can see kind of how this main pouch works here, right? I've got my mag here, goes in this pouch. Like I said, you can double stuff these if you want to. Uh, and then this Velcro comes over the top. I've got some more Velcro here and I've got multi-tool. Uh, you could also put pistol mags in here. Glock, Glock mags will work, uh, M9 mags will work. For the most part, you know, I, I guess uh, even I, honestly, I, I've slid my uh, 1911 mags in here. It works a little tight because they're not really designed for that, but got got no light. Why carry a regular flashlight when you can carry a flashlight that doubles as an explosive device, right? Um, which, by the way, I don't really buy into the whole O light hysteria that everyone hates on O light. Like, they're any worse than any China, other China, Chinese made uh, flashlight. Uh, I've had this Olight for four years. It's never given me any problems. I've had it run it on rifles, run it on pistols, like not on pistols, but run it on rifles, run it as a standalone. It works great, charges fine, holds a charge for a long time. I don't know. Maybe I'm one of one. Um, back to the rig. So, uh, kind of working on these pouches, right? Let's go around. So this is actually a uh, Eagle Industries flashbang pouch, but um, I was able to get an Enola Gay. Let's see if I can get it out of here without ripping out the smoke grenade in there, right? Uh, this is a green one. This would be more for, less for screening and more for marking, more than likely, right? Uh, depending on what I'm doing, we're out here at the cabin. Maybe I'm just running a patrol around the cabin, uh, get into some serious trouble, radio in back to home base, let them know, yo, I, I, I need reinforcements or I just shot a massive buck. I need people to come help, you know, gut and skin this thing and carry it back to camp, uh, whatever it might be. But I could be way far away, right? So smoke grenade could be good. Could also use this in a pinch for, um, you know, a screen. I don't know. I, you know, I'm not gonna mess around putting it back in there, but. White works better for screening than green does. Green, yeah, you know, any smoke is better than no smoke if you're really under fire and you really need to move. Um, but, you know, it also gives away your position for miles away. So keep that in mind when you're using smoke grenades, but this is not a movie on smoke grenades. Um, coming around, I've got uh, mag here, right? And then they, they also have these little, <laughs> I kind of want to call them dip pouches, right? Like there's a little pouch. I don't know how well you can see this, but there's like a little pouch up in here and it, a dip can would fit perfectly in there i don't i don't dip myself um but who knows you know it's, it's a good little admin pouch the one thing i don't i doesn't or isn't on this really is a good admin pouch i guess but it's all right um coming around so again another mag 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 and i've got mag here i also have a right in the rain right um i can keep maps compasses can't get in there right now, but maps, compasses, really, you know, whatever I want in these admin pouches. And this is very comfortable, guys. Like, I could be running around with this thing, diving, ducking, dodging, right? Like, and I didn't pay four or $500 to get this set up. You know, there, there are some great brands out there and some great small businesses that do really good uh, needlework and nylon work, and they make great stuff. And then, there, you know, I, I feel like a lot of stuff has been migrating towards the minimalist mini rigs and things like that. I really I would really only rock a mini rig if I'm, you know, on a very long range patrol. I really want to keep light, you know, weight as light as possible. And I really don't think I'm going to encounter anyone, right? Um, or for like sub guns, mini rigs are great because you can get like four or five mags in a mini rig. Uh, but really, if you're talking about possibility of engaging the enemy, you want some ammo. You want some ammo. And uh, a lot of the rigs on the market right now, now Recently, I will say like this year, there's been a trend. Like we've got, you know, Tracer Tactical making the Scout now and Spiritus has got some crap that I'm sure you guys are all drooling over. I don't really pay a whole lot of attention to what Spiritus, Spiritus is doing. They make great pouches. Uh, you know, I'll probably own some of the rigs at some point in time, but I don't now. I, I think they're um, a little pricey for what they are maybe. Uh, Haley Strategic just released some new stuff. They've got some um, more uh, beastly rigs. And of course, you know, uh, Grantham, uh, Father Flannel, I guess we should call him now because he's getting a little bit older. Uh, you know, Father Flannel, he's been really steering a lot of us towards more uh, recce build outs, right? But this is really just, this isn't a recce build out necessarily. This is just, this is an assault setup, guys. Like this is 
I've got my assault ruck on. I've got my chest rig, right? I'm not rocking plates because uh, maybe we have to, you know, hike 10 miles in, maybe longer, infill, and then we're gonna assault a position. I don't wanna be wearing plates for that, man. And unless we're going to go and assault like an actual building. If we're going into a building, uh, plates, right? Plates, front plates, side plates. I want all the armor if I'm going into a building because more than likely people are taking rounds uh, on your team. If you're gonna assault a building and you think you're gonna do some CQB. What I'd much rather do is ambush uh, a nefarious actor group, we'll call it that, out in the open right because then i can maneuver i can coordinate my guys we can close in on them and uh hopefully you know, take them all without a fight right that, that, that's ideal but probably not realistic but let's we're getting a little a little off the rails here guys sorry i'm ranting the point of this video is really that that surplus still fucks right like this this parka is fantastic it was 40 dollars. it's got one like rip in the hood that doesn't even affect anything I can use this thing, no problem. In fact, I'm gonna take it on a cold weather patrol next weekend with some of my guys. Uh, you know, I'm, in fact, this is the setup that I'm gonna rock, right? Like, this is gonna go in a pack until we get out in the woods, and then we're gonna bust it out. We're gonna go overt, and we're going to practice doing a cold camp, a patrol, and really, uh, you know, perfecting, or well, not perfecting, obviously not perfecting, but getting used to that type of movement with this type of kit in probably semi-austere conditions, right? And I plan on taking some of the guys on some winter patrols where we're gonna be snow camping. A lot of those guys have probably never done that before. We'll see how many of them show up. But, uh, you know, the idea here is that you need to buy your kit and train with it. So if you've got a ton of money and you wanna spend, you know, whatever on Spiritus and just be decked out in Spiritus, word, homie, you will look dope, you will have drip, and Spiritus is very functional. It's, just pricey right and as long as you train with it then you're good to go and I feel like that's something that really gets overlooked a lot in the industry people harp on it but not enough you need to train with your equipment you need to get out there don't buy a chest rig and be like cool this is set up in my home I'm good to go I have no problems right now come on man you need to you need to take that thing into the woods or wherever you plan on you know quote unquote operating with it right you need to take it out and you need to try it out you know is the velcro really freaking loud are you able to get it off softly how about your buckles are they loud when you jump up and down do you think shake does anything come out if you bend over right like you need you need to test your equipment you need to probably crawl around on the ground with it um and i i just don't see a whole lot of that going on right everybody glorifies the the flat range cqb sequence uh you know and, I, and i'm i'm guilty i i love the you know, quick, fast, in the door, shoot the bad guys, yeah. But the reality is that your first guy in is probably getting shot, right? If they're ready for you, your first guy in is probably getting shot. Or maybe he's quick, he doesn't get shot, your second man in gets shot, right? So really, the idea, and you know, I, I, another video that I, I posted really talks about bugging out, what you should do, where you should go. Get away from people best you can. Surround yourself with like-minded people. You should already be finding your tribe right now. You know, guys, this is not pie in the sky stuff. The reality is that the world right now is potentially on the brink of nuclear war. And we have no idea what the future is going to look like. Probably, probably everything's going to be okay for the most part, right? Probably. But I think there's a, a larger likelihood now that things are going to go wrong than there has been in really the past 20, 30 maybe 40 years, I don't know. You know, the Cuban Missile Crisis was pretty hot. The, the whole Cold War thing got pretty hot because the threat of nuclear weapons is a big deal. But the idea here is get your kit now and go train. Even if that means you don't get the most Gucci kit, multi-cammed out, you know, you're not multi-cam black from head to toe looking like a G uh, and glowing under IR. Um, you know, get out, go sort, do a little bit of research, source some good kit from a surplus store right there are thousands of surplus stores in the u.s and they sell great stuff two of the the biggest that i know of you know that i i use is americana pipe dream and venture surplus those those guys those guys sell absolute awesome stuff uh, there's a lot of nonsense in the surplus world right like you, you don't need a, a world war ii polish helmet don't buy that shit, right like but you can get recently issued surplus or even new unissued surplus 
for pretty cheap, guys. And this stuff is fantastic. This, this kit will last me probably till the day I die, provided I don't sell it, right? Like, it, it's, it's a fantastic kit. And you know, one other thing that I love about it too, and just kind of circling back to the surplus and the actual gear, because that's what you guys really care about, right? Is gear. We're not training, we're just buying gear. It's a front zip. So when I'm chilling, and I'm not worried about engaging the enemy, but I do want my mags on me, right? Like I want my kit on me. I can have my kit open like this, it can be hanging out, and it just kind of hangs to the side. It's nice, it's very comfortable, right? Let's talk a little bit about how I set this up too, right? So my pack is on top of my chest rig, okay? And there's a reason for that. So you're gonna go layers, rig, pack, gun. That's how you do things. Because you may need to get your gun off of you in order to maneuver into the shooting position that you need. So it needs to be the first thing that can come off of your body, right? Then, if we're going to assault this hilltop, I'm not bringing this fucking pack up there, dude. Now, I'm taking the pack off. We're zipping up the chest rig, and then we're going, right? And ideally, you've packed, you've layered yourself in a way with a wool base layer, hopefully like maybe another wool or grid fleece or puller fleece or you know some kind of synthetic mid layer, right? And then maybe, depending on how cool it is, maybe another layer, like a soft shell, and then kind of a hard shell like this. So you've layered yourself well so that you can vent, right? These have vents. I can vent out, I can open this up, not get too hot, you know, stay out of the rain, stay out of the snow, whatever might be coming, so you don't have to take off your chest rig. Because ideally you want your chest rig to remain on you. Even if you're rocking it like this, right? Even if you've got it open and you're chilling at your, you know, patrol base or your area, you know, your, your home base, whatever, but you, you know, threat is around, you know there might be enemy, there, there might be something that you have to deal with and you probably want this on you, right? So you can grab your rifle and go. True minute man style, right? Um, so you really don't have to take this off. That's kind of the idea, right? You want to layer things so that you can leave this on. Sometimes that means a jacket on top of your chest rig, which is okay, right? And maybe we can do another video about that. I don't know if I'll really dig into that, but um, you can totally put a jacket over your chest rig. Uh, especially if you've got like a micro chest rig. That's really where a micro chest rig come in handy. You get a micro chest rig, you think you might be infilling into an urban uh, area. You've got your jacket over your micro chest rig. People can't tell you have a micro chest rig on. I don't know where you've got your rifle stashed or maybe your sub gun. Uh, you know, maybe you've got a nice big overcoat or whatever and you can have your sub gun tucked in or uh, maybe you've even got your rifle slung and it just looks, you know, you can pull it off or in a bag or in a backpack. Right? Those are different conversations, but if you're going overt, you're out here, you know, you're out in the woods, you're at your family cabin, you're at your bug out location, you're at whatever, man. Um, you're at your patrol base that you set up to spy on the people who raided your town and took all your food and, you know, pillaged it. it then you want camo, you want neutral colors, and you're going to want a fighting load. Right? So figure out what you really need. Notice that I'm not wearing, I'm not wearing a belt, right? I'm not, I don't, I don't even have a pistol on me. That's not, you know, that's not the reality of the situation. I mean, maybe if things were really, really bad, I'd probably have a pistol, right? Like, uh, it's good to have a backup, but there's also an argument to be made that I could carry more ammo for my rifle, which is a much more useful item out here than a pistol. It's up to you. It depends on your area of operation. It depends on what you're trying to do. You know, are you, uh, you actively participating in the purge or are you just trying to survive it right <laughs> hopefully you're not actively participating um but yeah guys you know that's kind of it uh really summation surplus still fucks uh there is there is no reason that you have to buy from some you know, you know highly priced uh retailer right you, you really can find good stuff for cheap uh, and I, yeah, I wouldn't even say cheap, like a good deal, right? Like this was a good deal. This wasn't cheap. If I could find this for 50 bucks and then build it out, that'd be cheap, right? But for instance, Venture Surplus just had a massive sale. So 
Surplus still fucks. It's, it's still something that you can do. Uh, you can really build out a great kit. I highly recommend it. I highly recommend really figuring out what you're trying to build your kit for. Maybe a micro rig really is your best bet. Then buy a new micro rig, right? Like there's not a whole lot of micro rigs in the military as far as surplus goes. And that's for a reason because they're, their kit is set up for them to fight battles, not you know, infiltrate an urban population, right? So if you are worried about an overt conflict, I really think you should be. That's a possibility. Um, serious chest rig, right? And find something that's comfortable, guys. I, you know, I'm, I think I'm gonna do another one on another chest rig that I built, uh, almost entirely from Venture Surplus. I've got a tap rig. So we'll do that another time, but for now, it's just the Seagull Industries multi-purpose chest rig. Fantastic in khaki. This is the khaki. It's not coyote. Khaki. Khaki's better than coyote. I'll fight you on that. And uh, M81 is still cool. Hey guys, until next time.